at, for the Cosmic Forecast. We now have a blog, which I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast. Um, it's just generally for the cosmic energy. It's pbm2l, cosmicenergyforecast.blogspot.com. And it's also linked to our personal official website. And for this week's lunar update, January 13th, 2015, the moon is currently showing as a 46% full or a third quarter half moon. When the moon is in the third quarter or one half of the moon appears to be illuminated by the direct sunlight, this means that it's about 90 degree angle in respect to the earth and the sun, which is only showing us about half of the moon. When the left half of the moon is illuminated, this also means that the moon's visibility is decreasing though through the, through the weeks as we drift into the stage, stages towards the, the new moon coming around January 20th, which uh, I would also like to remind you that we're doing new moon card readings as well as full moon card readings. And this month's readers will be me and Selena de Flor. And I'm really excited about that. Um, but back to the current moon status, it's effect on us, which I got a awesome forecast through Indigo Flame Gifts or James Scramlin, one of our Reiki masters, via Cafe Astrology. He, he directed me to this and it says, when the sun is in Capricorn and it squares the moon in Libra, after basking in the awareness of the symbolized full moon light, the time of last week's full moon is now dispersing and our knowledge is come to a full point where we need to sort out and wait what works for us and just figure out what does and doesn't. This is in preparation for next week's new moon and when something new is born once again, it comes with a lot of information. It's not the best time to start a major project, which I shared earlier, as the decreasing light of the, the moon symbolizes in the descent into the unconsciousness, it's a time to begin finishing up the details of which was conceived at the last new moon, which was December 21st. Um, Venus and Uranus are today are enabling each other to make more successful social interactions, as well as opening new perspectives and new situations for us, which went along with the, the card I did for this week's podcast. Um, we are embracing all that is new and unusual and out of the ordinary. And let's see here. We're also ready to experiment, but not necessarily ready to commit. And we have to taste for the offbeat when it comes to people right now or entertainment, objects and pleasures. They all seem a little different because we're really growing with the energy around us. Um, the moon's in a searchable Libra until about actually right now or around seven, seven ish was when it started to shift into a more perceptive Scorpio sign. Um, my overview on that is that it's generally now a time for finishing up things that you started around Christmas time, other winter holidays, and to not start jumping into something new just yet. Um, I recommend that you wait until after January 20th to start any new big projects. However, just working on embracing the new and what is coming is very important. Um, and that's all I have for the lunar update. I hope the, the forecast has helped you understand the, the current moon a little better. And I'm going to pass it over to Silmon for the sun. Thank you. I, I apologize. I, I switched from the GIF to the chat back and forth because uh, for some reason, I thought that I accidentally closed the Google Hangout, but I didn't. So uh, Good work there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure you all heard her, heard her lunar update. So we're going to start off here with the planetary alignments. And our friend Selena de Flora really, really, really wanted me to tell you guys that Scorpio tomorrow is going through a trine with Saturn and Venus. So it's going to be a very powerful day for Scorpio tomorrow. And if you, if you are Scorpio, it would be time to uh, invest in something positive for yourself. You're going to be very powerful. You're going to have a lot of new things coming. So make sure that uh, what you're doing is for um, the greater good. Are they laughing at me? No, I am. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an old man trying to find out how to work technology. It's dang it's, technology. We just have so many new things happening. It's, I know. it's all downloading with us as much as it is the rest of the world. Yeah. So let's see, we got Jur Jur Jupiter is in Virgo, uh, Saturn is in Sagittarius, Mars, Mercury, Venus, and Neptune are all 
in Aquarius and Uranus is in Pisces. So right now the uh, the moon is in Scorpio as well. Yep, it just moved into Scorpio. It did just move into Scorpio. So if you if you look on the horizon, you probably saw pictures of uh, Saturn and Venus, how they're really close together, and um, that that's the the trine that they're creating with the moon, and so Scorpio is moving right through that. Um, Awesome. I also just posted the, the link in the chat. So if you would like to watch the video that he was going to show at the beginning that kind of froze on us, that, that is available in our Cosmic Forecast blog. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to exit out of that. And now on to the sun. This is your solar flare update for the week of January 13th, 2015. All right. So let's see. On January 13th, Sunspot AR2257 produced an M5 class solar flare at 424 universal time. And this picture you're seeing here is what was created out of that solar flare. UV radiation from the flare ionized Earth's atmosphere above Australia, Indonesia, and Thailand. And frequencies below 10 megahertz may have had a short blackout for those ham radios. And now I'm going to move over here to show you. This is the uh, live feed for that specific day. And you can see here on the 13th, if we reverse it, we start again. And it goes 12, 11, 10. And when we go down to 4, 24, on the 13th, or 442. <laughs> Anyway, you won't see a CME. There is no major CME from this solar flare. Um, and what that means is that there will not be a CME uh, Earth collision, which means that there is a very rare chance of any geomagnetic storms uh, for today. But AR2257 is Beta Gamma Delta. And if you don't know what that means, Beta Gamma Delta means that the positive and negative polarities are a little too complex to be just a straight line, but they are bipolar. Um, and the delta means that the center of one sunspot is separated by less than two degrees between the outer dark edges of that sunspot. Um, in simple terms, it means that the sunspots are really close together. Mm -hmm which is why it's beta, gamma, delta. And so that is going to produce a 40% chance of more M-class solar flares for uh, this evening and a 10% chance of an X-class solar flare. And that is forecasted by the NOAA. And that is your solar flare update for the week of January 13th, 2014. 15? Two, oh, you're right. We're in 2015 now. 